gal, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video today. We are doing a very fun recipe video. We are making three vegetarian, very seasonal spring side dishes, salads, kind of things. <laughs> and I just feel like vegetables are never the star of the show. So let's make vegetables the star of the show. <laughs> so all three of these recipes are very Italian inspired. Of course, I always do Mediterranean diet, but today I was feeling really close to my roots coming up with these <laughs> recipes. So I am pulling out some of my favorite, all time favorite Italian things, ingredients, combinations, flavors, all that good stuff. But as you guys know, I like to do these videos with a drink in hand. It is 1240 on a Tuesday, so I can't really pour myself a glass of wine, but I am gonna crack open a Lemoncello LaCroix because Lemoncello is one of my favorites. <laughs> Although this tastes nothing like it, in my opinion. <laughs> As the queen of zero food waste, of course, I'm starting off with one of my favorites, which is Manzanella. I absolutely love this because we make sourdough here at home. When you buy a loaf of sourdough, you don't go through it that quickly and bread can get stale super, super quickly. So I had actually a loaf and a half, honestly, left over from my birthday weekend when we made sourdough. It was getting pretty stale. So the absolute most perfect thing to do was tear it all up. It was already pretty stale. So I just teared up all the slices that I had pre-cut and left it out on a tray in the oven for a few hours. You can even turn the oven on to like the very lowest temperature, which is 170 like you know or just as low as your oven can go and just have it so it you I mean you don't want it rock hard that you would break your teeth on it but you definitely want it a little very crispy because the drier it is the more it's going to absorb the oil absorb the flavor and this is a recipe that you definitely want to sit for at least five, six hours, if not longer, to make sure that the bread is well absorbed. I'm also getting my trash bowl that I seem to never remember to get before I start the video. So caponata is Sicilian, and it is eggplant, bell pepper, tomatoes, onion, olives, capers. It's that kind of mixture. And it's often cooked down into a sauce. I am kind of making a little bit more fresh of a version. I'm not gonna pressure of a version. I'm not gonna cook it down as much because I really wanna be able to taste the meaty vegetables. The thing with panzanella is it has to be a very saucy kind of thing because that bread needs a lot to absorb. So I'm taking the eggplant about three fourths of an inch and then I'm doing, I'm cutting that into like quarter strips. I'm preheating the oven to 425 because I want these to get really nice and golden brown to develop some really good flavor. Next, I'm going in with one red bell pepper. It's really traditional to use a red bell pepper. If you don't have one, you can use a yellow and orange. Don't use a green one. I hate, I have a pet peeve with green bell peppers. They are unripe and to me, they just don't taste good at all. And they just, I don't know, they just bother me. They, they're my pet peeve. <laughs> one of my very many pet peeves actually. So again, we wanna keep it pretty meaty. So I'm just kind of cubing up like an inch thick of strips into threes. I mean, it would be really pretty to use like a yellow or orange pepper in this dish now that I think about it, but I'm gonna try to keep it traditional, which is not true because nothing about this is traditional. So my favorite tomatoes are the Campari tomatoes. I love the taste of fresh tomatoes. I don't love the taste of cooked tomatoes. So I'm going to keep my tomatoes fresh. So next I'm going in with the onion. I'm gonna just peel off that outer layer. Just like that. And again, I like to eat chunky vegetables. So I'm gonna keep this pretty dang chunky, but you can cut it a little bit smaller. Not, you don't wanna cut the onion too small though, because it can burn. That's why you kind of want all the vegetables about the same size. So we have some red onion. Could also use white onion here just fine. I love the color of the red onion. So, and I love the flavor actually a lot more in the red onion. And then add the roughly chopped onion to the tray. So I have the vegetables all laid out on the tray here and to enhance the caramelization and because we're cooking it at such a high heat, I'm going in with avocado spray. I got a comment on one of my videos that um, why would I use this because sprays tend to be a little bit toxic. This company particularly, uh, Chosen Foods, does a good job not like filling any of their sprays with chemicals or anything like that. It's a very natural spraying avocado oil and I just really enjoy it because I'm just trying to lightly, co to co <laughs> lightly coat these words, Caroline, in um, oil because we're gonna make a whole entire dressing, so I'm not trying to drench these too much in oil, but you definitely do want the oil to help them release 
their juices. So I'm going in with some simple seasoning, salt and pepper. So I'm keeping the vegetables very simple and letting them speak for themselves. Vegetables, when cooked properly, have a ton of flavor. I'm not saying like don't under season, we're still gonna be building layers and layers of flavor. But if a vegetable needs a ton of seasoning to be the flavor to be brought out, then you probably aren't sourcing your vegetables from the best place. I don't know, America's vegetables taste like water. They don't taste anything like European vegetables. So I think one of my biggest pet peeves about America <laughs> is our zucchini. <laughs> our zucchini is so freaking large. Like the zucchini can get so big here and literally the bigger the zucchini, the more water it tastes like. Like you want teeny tiny zucchini because it has more flavor. The bigger it is, the more watered down it is. Listen, listen to me and all my food pet peeves. I'm such a weirdo. All right, evenly distribute the vegetables so they can get caramelized on every side. This is complete and now I'm gonna pop the vegetables in the oven for about 15, 20 minutes each side. Actually about probably 10, 12 minutes each side. Yeah. Next, we're gonna make the dressing, marinade, whatever for this panzanella. So I'm going in with a half a cup of the best thing ever, Italian extra virgin olive oil. So the combination of ingredients here, you're gonna see me use over and over and over again. Like, I don't think it gets any better than this as far as like a combination for a salad dressing slash marinade. You can marinate chicken in this, you can marinate basically any protein in this. You could marinate um, vegetables in this. It's just so good, okay? It's olive oil, a big splash of red wine vinegar, half of an insanely juicy lemon. Me, personally, I'd probably go in with a whole lemon, but that probably would be overkill for some people. They'd say it's too lemony. I don't think there is a such thing as lemony. I'm the queen of zest, so. One really big garlic clove, gonna smash it so I can just take the peel right off. I'll get all that goodness off. My favorite dried herb in the whole entire world, this is oregano from my Nonna's garden. I smuggled it home. <laughs> that sounds so bad to say. I smuggled it home like two years ago um, in a plastic baggie that was all tied up. And so I can only imagine what they thought when they looked through my luggage, through the little screens of those colors. Anyways, dried oregano. <laughs> Some salt and pepper because what is a single thing that you eat without salt and pepper? You know what I'm saying? Some salt. If you wanted to, you could go in with other dried herbs, uh, maybe some dried thyme or something. So the next almost final step of this panzanella comes together so quickly. It's like a 20 minute dish to make. So easy is the tomatoes. So my tomatoes, like I said, are super flavorful ones. They're the Campari tomatoes which are honestly my favorites. Personally, most of the time, almost all my recipes, I tend to take out the seeds and the insides of a tomato because it tends to make it really watery, but we need the water and the juices today. Those are gonna give off amazing flavor and it's just gonna help with softening that bread. So I'm just having and then cutting into force. Depending on which tomatoes you get, Honestly, if you can find some really good yummy heirloom tomatoes, maybe at your farmer's market, those would be so good in this. Um, also, you could use Roma tomatoes. Those are the one of probably the most popular of uses. Popular. <laughs> English is so hard today. Those are probably one of the most popular tomatoes used often are Roma ones. I don't love Roma tomatoes, which is really sad because I'm from Rome. Anyhow, <laughs> just include all of that. So I'm going in with about, I think, 10 tomatoes, so probably like two cups of tomatoes. A lot of tomatoes. This is mostly a tomato heavy vegetable dish. I would say like tomatoes run the show and then eggplant and bell pepper just come in on the side and be like, hey, we're here too. Another reason why I love this dish so much is it includes one of my favorite things in the world, which is olives, a green olive, probably one of my favorite olives ever. One of my best friends in Cleveland, her name's Lauren. She introduced me years ago in college <laughs> to these olives. You can use whatever green olives you want, even if you have caramel olives on hand, that's fine too. And then one of my least favorite ingredients that I actually like only in this dish, which is capers. I'm really not a fan of capers. They're very briny, but they add a depth of flavor to this dish. Next, we're gonna go in with a big sprinkling of pre-prepped 
parsley. So I just took a bunch of flat leaf parsley. I prefer flat leaf to curly and just cut it all down. And I have that prepped because we'll be using it in some other ingredients. Ingredients, we'll be using it in some other dishes. And then I have the best fresh herb in the world. The best dried is oregano. The best fresh is basil. Oh, basil, basil. I, I, whenever I stay with my grandmother in Italy, she'll go on her terrace and go pick some basil for lunch. She'll come over to me while I'm working at the table or something and be like, Caroline, smell this fresh basil. And I'm just like, oh, anyways. All right, so basil tends to blacken like in seconds. It's a very fragile little delicate herb she is. So with basil, I just go and tear it in. I can literally eat basil like a lettuce leaf. I like big chunks of it. <laughs> um, it just adds layers of flavor. So I'm gonna take a very extra large handful because I'm Caroline and I'm obsessed with herbs of basil, pick out any of the little black guys, and I'm just going to tear it up. When it's kind of crushed is when it starts to turn black really, really, really quickly. So kind of lightly tear it. So we are at the final step. I have the roasted vegetable goodness. They got insanely caramelized. So everything's just ready and now we just have to assemble it and this will just wait a few hours until the next day to Enjoy it. I'm going to take the mixture here with all those really, really liquidy tomatoes. Oh my gosh, this is already so beautiful. <laughs> We're gonna go in with all of the amazing, crispy, caramelized roasted vegetables. Yep, this is gonna suck to toss. I need a bigger bowl. Um, growing up, my mom had this, I kid you not, like twice the size of this, this white bowl. And growing up, we ate a ton of carbonara because we're from Rome. So like most kids would normally have like mac and cheese night. We had carbonara night and she would make it and plate it and, and toss it all together in this, like I kid you not, it was like this big of a white plastic bowl. And we, my brothers and I still refer to it as the carbonara bowl. <laughs> That's how many good memories we have wrapped up into food. All right, I gave the dressing one more toss before adding it all in and then I'm just going to very gently give this all a nice toss until basically every single piece of bread is coated. So I'm just kind of making sure that it's evenly distributed because you don't want insanely soggy on the bottom and then dry on the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in a little bit of the toasted walnuts because I like the flavor that they get when they get absorbed in with everything else. They do retain like half of their crunch. Even after a day or two in the fridge, they will retain, retain a little bit of crunch. Look how beautiful. Guys, I am so excited. I'm gonna throw this in the fridge and we're gonna get started on recipe number two, which is a lemon artichoke pasta salad. To start off the lemon artichoke pasta salad that takes 15 minutes to make tops, you need half a pound of your favorite pasta. Short grain, preferably. I'm going in with my favorite pasta of all time is orecchiette. I love this pasta. This is my childhood pasta <laughs> shape. My mom bought this on repeat, orecchiette, which means little, kind of little ears. This pasta shape is actually from Puglia, which I just recently got to go last, or about two years ago, I went to Puglia for the first time with my mom, which is the southern heel of the Italian boot. And I just love this artisanal pasta so much. Those ridges help catch all the flavors. The little divot on the inside helps catch the flavors. In a pot of boiling, boiling water, we're going to add a bunch of salt and then the half pound of pasta. And by the time it's ready, everything else will be ready. So these two marinated vegetables are the star of the show in today's pasta salad. This is marinated artichokes and marinated sun-dried tomatoes. So I prepped these earlier this morning. You could prep them literally days in advance. Marinated artichokes, hearts, and sun-dried tomatoes are insanely overpriced in the grocery store, and they are filled with sunflower oil and just not the best of the best. Olive oil, not the best of the best. Like when you're eating something so fresh, like the marinade of something, you want it to be the highest of ingredients. And I went in with some olive oil, some citrus. I liked both orange and lemon citrus, but you could use just, I'm sorry, zest, but you could use just the zest of a lemon. You don't need the orange too. If you're not a huge orange flavor fan, I just think it, think it just brings out so many good flavors. Goes in with olive oil, a big splash of red wine vinegar. 
Um, the zest, the reason why I use the zest is because it is so much more potent of flavor than the juice. And we already have that acidity from the vinegar that we didn't need to overdo it with the acidity. So I just went in the zest for the aromatics, not for the acidic aspect of the lemon and the orange, just the aromatic aspect of it. The dried oregano, and then you can add dried rosemary as well. That's optional. I just love it. And then a garlic clove. You definitely want to remove the garlic clove afterwards. You don't really want to eat that. I mean, you can, you could even take it out and put it through a garlic press. But these artichokes are so soft, so buttery, and they go so well with the al dente pasta. Because artichokes are in season right now, it's spring, I really wanted to make my own and do the whole thing, but then I realized I don't have all the time to make 10, like at least 10 or 12 artichoke hearts right now, so I just got them canned. But if you have the time and you love to make stuff like that, please go ahead and prep your own artichokes. It will taste 20 times better if you do. So I didn't chop them beforehand, but I am giving them like just a rough chop with my rubber spatula right now because they're so buttery and nice that you can do that. They smell absolutely amazing. So I'm going in with the artichokes all and their marinade because the marinade is going to be the dressing of this salad. So it's like a two for one. And I use the exact same marinade for the sun-dried tomatoes. Made it super simple and easy. And I already pre-cut the sun-dried tomatoes so I didn't have to put it out on the cutting board and chop them and get the oil all over the cutting board and just that would be super wasteful. I'm only gonna use about half of the sun-dried tomatoes that I prepped because I do wanna use these for like salads and other grain dishes. So I'm only going in with about two tablespoons, eh, fourth a cup probably, <laughs> of sun-dried tomatoes. And if any oil comes, bring it on, but I'm not trying to pour any of the oil in the sun-dried tomato container. The only other thing you have to add in addition to the marinade is a little bit more lemon juice because I love the bright zesty lemon. These ingredients are the toppers of this pasta salad. Of course, some freshly torn basil, some arugula. I wanted to add a very fresh, vibrant vegetable to this dish, and I felt like arugula paired so well that the arugula would be really, really nice, uh, tender, leafy green. And then I couldn't find ricotta salata, which is very just a delicious cheese that I just promise you would you know go so well with this so I'm just gonna use some feta today but any crumbly salty cheese time for my favorite part as a kid growing up and I think it's still my favorite part oh hot pasta I have drained the pasta tossing it into this gorgeous goodness oh my gosh the hot pasta hitting the lemon zest right now heaven Make sure you get every, every piece of pasta coated. All right, so next I'm going to add in the feta and just crumble it. I like a freshly crumbled feta. Give the feta a little toss. I like to add it in when it's still slightly warm because the feta kind of absorbs the oil a little bit because that heat of the pasta. And you can already see the pasta is definitely absorbing the oil as well. And then I'm going to add in the final ingredients, which is some chopped pistachios for some crunch. I feel like pistachios pair so, so well with citrusy things. Some fresh basil all up into this pasta salad. Now that the pasta has cooled a lot, I can add in the arugula. So probably like two big handfuls of arugula because arugula is not very much of a wilting lettuce. So it's not really good under heat. It's supposed to be more of a fresh lettuce. So you don't really want the heat of the pasta to wilt it too much. So this pasta would honestly good right now, but the kind the way we prepared it and the flavors that are in it, it's also amazing. The later that day, the next day, it is a great great like lunch or, you know, throw some chicken on it, throw some shrimp on it, throw anything protein-wise and it's a great meal. Pasta salad is complete. I'm going to throw this in the fridge and then we're going to move on to our third and final recipe. So I'm doing a little voiceover here because this third and final dish was so easy and quick. So I'm starting off with blanching some sweet peas. I absolutely love peas, they are so delicious. And after I cook the peas, I'm adding in some chicken stock or vegetable broth to the same pan and some farro. Farro is my favorite grain of all time. It is chewy, it is nutty, it is just 
an unbelievably satisfying and good for you grain. Then while the farro cooks, you put the sauce together, which is some peas, some pecorino, and some parmigiano, some ricotta for some cheesy, creamy, smooth, salty goodness. These cheeses really bring this sauce to the next level. Salt and pepper, of course, lots of lemon to enhance that sweet pea flavor and just complement it so well, and then a lot of mint. Blend that all up together till it's nice and smooth and creamy. This sauce has so many different ways you could use it, but today we're putting it with some grains. So toss in the farro, and then I also crisped up some prosciutto, kind of like bacon on a tray. You could use regular bacon if you want, any kind of you know salty, meaty goodness to crunch and crumble on top, and there you have it. We are on the next day. I have literally my whole plating area slash shooting area for all the food right here, and I'm gonna start with this one, the last one. Um, we're just gonna get this out of the way. So I really, really wanted to scratch <laughs> this whole recipe from this video. I had this amazing idea of a mint pea ricotta sauce. Unbelievable, so dang good. I love farro. Farro is one of the best grains, probably my favorite grain above like quinoa and rice and all that stuff to eat. But I combined them and it looks like throw up. And I, I'm super upset this looks like baby food. Like, I really should have switched the pasta, like I should have used just a regular pasta like fusilli or rotini or just some pasta shape. So it didn't, I, I tried so hard guys, I put flowers on this to make it look good. And you have to trust me, it's freaking delicious. It's so, so, so delicious. And I really wanted to remake this whole entire recipe for this video, but I also wanted to get this video up. So it's delicious you guys, I promise. It's so creamy and cheesy. The mint is so good with the peas, and then the crispy prosciutto that goes on top of this adds that crunch that you need, along with the chewiness of the farro and the creamy, salty goodness from the sauce. And the prosciutto adds the saltiness and adds another layer of saltiness. Like, this is a delicious dish. It just doesn't look like it. And I'm, I'm sorry. Next up, we have the amazing marinated artichoke, super lemony, delicious pasta salad. The pistachios definitely keep their crunch after a few days. This orchette, I love it so much because it's literally little tiny bowls <laughs> to catch all of the mix-ins of the sun-dried tomatoes, the pistachios, the feta, or in a perfect world, ricotta salata. Mm. And the creamy, melty artichoke hearts, they're all throughout and the nice, chewy, sweet, slash tangy sun-dry tomatoes. Like there's so much going on here, but it was so, so, so simple to make. You know, I love those other two dishes, but bread, I think is one of my all-time favorite carbs <laughs> when it comes to like pasta and rice and all of that, seriously. These are the three, three my three favorite carbs, farro, pasta, specifically orecchiette, and bread. Mm. Mm. The bread is so chewy, but it's not like soggy. It's just developed so much flavor. Please try all these recipes and leave a comment below which one your favorite is or which one you're most excited to try. All the above. Thank you so, so, so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this inspires you to get into the kitchen and cook up some delicious produce goodness, Mediterranean diet style. Thank you so much for watching. Your support means the absolute world to me. Hit that subscribe button and the like button. If you did enjoy this video, and I hope you create a very zestful day. Ciao.